Okay, guys, so today we are going to talk about a very, very interesting article. In fact, I think it's one of the best articles that we have presented this season. It's about mosaic attenuation of the lungs in CT scan. The, their etiology, their methods of differentiation and pitfalls, they are so common. We like almost every day we see different types of mosaic attenuation. Uh, they have many different reasons. They are very uh, difficult to approach, to know what is which, what is the abnormal, where is the abnormality. So this article was written very nicely, uh, and I hope your colleague, Dr. Serbest, will teach us even more. Okay? So let's listen and learn. Thanks for Dr. Ahmed. Uh, you can say good morning or good afternoon for all. Uh, our article is about uh, mosaic attenuation, etiology, method of differentiation, and uh, pitfalls. Uh, we know that the mosaic attenuation is an, it's a common imaging finding of chest CT, defined as heterogeneous area of uh, different lung attenuation. Uh, mosaic attenuation is, is implies just uh, just a finding and it has a large differential diagnosis and it is not uh, a diagnosis in itself and broadly it occurs most commonly in uh, disease of the small airway pulmonary vasculature alveoli and uh, also in the interstitium uh, either alone or in combination uh, first uh, regarding the small airway disease they are either they are classified broadly to either primary disorder like respiratory bronchiolitis or constricted bronchiolitis, or they are part of either parenchymal lung disease like hypersensitivity pneumonitis or large airway disease like uh, bronchiectasis and uh, asthma. Uh, vascular causes uh, typically include uh, chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension. Uh, in which there is organizing from by in the elastic pulmonary arteries or pulmonary artery hyperten hypertension, which include a heterogeneous group of disease, uh, mainly affecting the distal pulmonary arterioles. Yes. Or pulmonary arterial hypertension. Either primary, just involved that small airway or in combination with the large airway disease. Uh, so the causes of mosaic attenuation, parenchymal lung disease include about half of cases, small airway disease about third, and the remaining causes are caused by vascular diseases. So the least common cause is the vascular disease. Vascular disease by alveolar disease. Uh, the important issue is that when we see the mosaic attenuation, it's important to know which part of the lung is normal. Mosaic attenuation, we say heterogeneous, and one area is dense, one area is hypolucent. So how to know which area is abnormal? Uh, Sometimes area of low attenuation are abnormal, and others, the high attenuated area is abnormal. In some cases, both high and low attenuated area are abnormal. In this case, it's difficult to determine if normal lung parenchyma exists. Later we discuss it how to differentiate. The purpose of this article is to review the causes of mosaic attenuation and also highlighting some differentiating feature to determine the pathological process and the diagnosis. Uh, mosaic attenuation and air trapping. Air trapping is common in mosaic attenuation but we, we must know how much, how much amount of uh, air trapping is normal. Normally, in normal individual, there is some degree of parenchymal heterogeneity. They are not the same. They are not on the same density. Uh, like most dependent portion of the lung, I mean, for example, if the patient in lying position, the posterior part is slightly hyperattenuated. And less dependent lung, they are, they are low attenuated. And there is discontinuity of this gradient. 
for example, if the patient is supine position, uh, the 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 posterior aspect of the upper lobe have higher attenuation than the superior segment of the lower lobe because of the fissure there will be discontinuation of the gradient. Yes. Yes. Gradient is just a specific for one lobe. But between lobes, there is continuation of this discontinuation of this gradient. Uh, next cause of the next cause of the uh, this heterogeneous appearance or normal mosaic attenuation is due to perfusion gradient. This is exists axial. Previous was yani, AP. This is axial, yani, the mo more more perfusion centrally than peripheral. When central part of the lens perfused more than normal. Central has to travel. Yes. So mild mosaic attenuation in inspiration can be seen in up to 20% of patients. And they are accentuated below the total lung capacity. If the patient cannot take deep inspiration, the heterogeneity will increase. Uh, so how to differentiate between the causes of uh, mosaic attenuation is first is to perform expiratory imaging. A small airway disease, small airway disease, it means when there is small airway obstruction, air cannot escape in the region where the airway are obstructed. So attenuation of the involved segment remain unchanged in comparison during inspiration. There is an area affected by small airway disease. In inspiration, this high pollution. During expiration, this high pollution C will remain will remain because air cannot escape. In the non-involved area, the same patient, in the non-involved area, air normally conducting. So during expiration, the attenuation will increase. And the uh, obstructed part remain hyper hyper so the contrast, the difference will increase, become more accentuated, this difference between hyperlucency and uh, hypolucency. So the difference in attenuation between the normal and abnormal area is increased and air trapping is diagnosed, as we see in the figures uh, just now. Uh, at expiratory CT, in patient without small airway disease, if there is no disease, the lung should show diffuse increase in attenuation and appear gray. Because it's this air, so Uniform increase in the For example, in this uh, city at the level of the carina, uh, you see mosaic attenuation. This area are uh, high attenuated and these are low attenuated region. Uh, there is a relative decrease in the vascularity in the hypoattenuated area. You see in the hypoattenuated area, the vascularity will uh, decrease. This, uh, the, the, here we cannot differentiate between small airway disease or vascular causes. But when we do the expiratory image, we see that the normal area, normal hyperattenuated area, and there will be increase in the attenuation, become denser, while the hypo dense area will remain the same. This is confirmed small airway disease as a cause of mosaic attenuation. Yes. So there is no going. In this figure, we, we also see that there is uh, increased density in this area. So there is uh, mosaic attenuation. 
uh, in the expiratory film, uh, we see that the density increase. So we know that this area, is, this mosaic emission is not caused by uh, so small airway disease. And uh, the pulmonary vascularity is the same through both the abnormal and normal area. So uh, this is not uh, small airway disease and not vascular disease also. And uh, this is biopsy confirmed the organizing pneumonia. We will discuss later. Is this parenchymal disease? Clear or not? On the right side, yes. on the left side, the same area becomes more dense. Yes, that the we exclude the small airway disease. Small and because the vessels are the same, vessels are not the same in both. Uh, like inspiratory imaging, normal grading exists at expiratory image. With this difference in uh, density will remain, like in inspiration. The dependent lung slightly higher attenuation at expiration, and the non-dependent lung lower attenuation. However, beyond this physiologic gradient, area or areas of low burial air trapping occur in 40 to 80 percent of normal patients. Then, even in normal patient. There is some lobules that uh, show air trapping, uh, like in this picture, uh, this uh, CT scan on inspiratory, inspiratory phase, completely normal, uh, while in the expiratory phase, we see the generalized increase in density. The dependent part, this posterior part, is, on is denser than the non-dependent part, this physiological. But we see some lobules of air trapping, like these few lobules. This is regarded as normal. Uh, in a study uh, done, uh, there is uh, a period that there is mild and uh, moderate uh, air trapping uh, occur at the same level between normal individual with normal pulmonary fun function test an asthmatic patient. They have a similar degree of air trapping. So air trapping also increases with age and they are more pronounced in smokers. Mild air trapping regarded as less than three adjacent lobules and moderate three lobules to one segment. <coughs> Up to one segment regarded as normal. Uh, <coughs> if air trapping is more than one segment, it is regarded uh, as abnormal, and uh, we should search for the underlying cause. The etiology of the small of the mosaic attenuation, first we say small airway. Small airway defined as non cartilaginous airway with internal diameter less than 2 million, located from about the fourth generation of airway down to the thermal bronchial and respiratory bronchial. If up to thermal and respiratory bronchial. They are not visible at CT due to their small size, but uh, become visible when there is underlying disease. So, respiratory bronchial, they are Yes. And they have the procedure, they are uh, We say the bro bro small airway disease either primary, like constrictive, acute, diffuse, respiratory bronchiolitis, or associated with interstitial lung disease. But they are presented with prominent bronchiolar involvement, like hypersensitivity pneumonitis, respiratory bron like bronchiolitis, interstitial lung disease, this uh, of interstitial pneumonitis, these two are related to smoking, and organize, organizing pneumonia. 
or they are associated with large airway disease like chronic bronchitis, asthma, or bronchiectasis. And these are the cause of one of the primary, we say, primary small airway diseases, constrictive bronchiolitis. These are associated with constrictive bronchiolitis, either infection, collagenovascular disease, transplantation, drug, toxic exposure, or some miscellaneous causes. Of uh, mosaic attenuation are pulmonary vascular diseases. They cause mosaic attenuation when, when mainly due to regional difference in lung perfusion. And they are most commonly seen in uh, pulmonary hypertension. Pulmonary hypertension causes enlargement of the uh, pulmonary trunk and uh, causing remodeling of the right heart. Right heart, including mainly right ventricle like right ventricular hypertrophy or right ventricular dilatation. The most common causes of uh, mosaic attenuation and pulmonary vascular causes of mosaic attenuation are chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension and pulmonary artery hypertension. Any cause of pulmonary hypertension can lead to mosaic attenuation. Uh, like uh, pulmonary hypertension due to long-standing cardiac shunt, left to right shunt, or due to left heart, left side heart disease, uh, or lung disease, chronic lung disease, uh, but they are less likely because uh, mm -hmm. when there is left side heart disease, there will be dilated left heart, septal thickening, and uh, severe emphysema or fibrosis. Other causes of pulmonary hypertension are uh, pulmonary venoocclusive disease, and pulmonary capillary hemangiomatosis. Uh, these are less common. Another cause is vasculitis, uh, which lead to increased glass, uh, ground glass opacity uh, due to pulmonary hemorrhage. Ground glass opacity is also sometimes really associated with uh, mosaic attenuation. We mentioned it. Ground glass opacity defined as increased lung attenuation through which underlying airway and vessel remain visible. Bronchi, uh, artery, they are become normal. Yes. They are either diffuse, diffuse, uh, it is non specific uh, with many causes. Uh, Sometimes it may be easy to distinguish the abnormal increase in attenuation from the normal parenchyma, but sometimes the abnormal uh, area can be difficult uh, to differentiate from normal parenchyma and has a wide differential diagonal. Uh, these are the causes of uh, mosaic attenuation due to diffuse ground glass opacity. And by the way, ground glass opacity by itself causes mosaic attenuation. The area of ground glass opacity increases in density. The surrounding area lower density. This is by itself is mosaic attenuation. It's either acute due to pulmonary edema, hemorrhage, or infection, and anything filling the alveoli, uh, or uh, diffuse alveolar damage in its exudate phase, and acute eosinophilic pneumonia, or could be due to subacute or chronic causes like organizing pneumonia, hypersensitivity pneumonitis, infection, also diffuse alveolar damage, and it is organizing and fibrotic phases. The pathophysiology of uh, mosaic attenuation in small airway disease is due to presence of normal attenuated lung in direct opposition to abnormal hyperlucida, as we mentioned. 
there will be dilatation because of uh, air trapping or hyperlucency and the surrounding length is normal disc so there will be mosaic attenuation Mosaic attenuation can be an indirect sign of small airway disease, non respiratory CT, and non specific finding. Not every mosaic attenuation is due to small airway disease. Mosaic attenuation is just a sign. Small airway causes of uh, mosaic attenuation are more common than vascular causes. As we say, the least common cause of uh, mosaic attenuation is vascular. When there is bronchiolar obstruction, lung distal to the obstruction remain aerated through collateral air drift. There is obstruction, but still there is air uh, between alveoli through pores of con or bronchi, bronchi and alveoli uh, through canal of Lambert or between or interbronchiolar, like uh, through channels of Martin. These are communication. But despite aeration, Obstruction reduce the ability to perform adequate gas exchange. Uh, again, blood will be shunted. There is no gas exchange in, the, in this area, so blood uh, will be shunted in the area and lead to decreased perfusion. This thing, decrease in perfusion, increase lucency, and also lead to decrease in the size of vessels in the region of the hyperlucency. This finding we say it also seen. And vascular causes of mosaic attenuation. But in this case, later, Mosaic attenuation or air trapping can be focal or diffuse. When diffuse, it may be difficult to, to locate any normal parenchyma. Uh, in this uh, figure, uh, case of constrictive uh, bronchiolitis with the history of uh, lung transplantation. We say one of the causes of constrictive bronchiolitis is lung transplantation. We see near homogeneous, uh, near, near homogeneity. If you just superficially see, it looks uh, homogeneous. But uh, with closer inspection, we see fewer area of slightly hyperattenuated lung, like this area, this, and this, uh, represent normal lung. These are the normal lung, these two area. And the large airway, uh, although not thickened, do not taper normally, no evidence of peripheral fibrosis suggesting an airway cause. Uh, this is uh, this arrow indicates the this is called clamshell midline sternocoli. Bilateral. Yes. 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 Y
the abnormality is primarily in the distal pulmonary arteries, while in chronic thrombolic disease, there will be organizing thrombi in the pulmonary artery, either partial or complete obstruction. The heterogeneity in the parenchyma or mosaic attenuation is due to decrease in blood flow to areas of decreased attenuation because of the thrombosis. Uh, but on the basis of mosaic attenuation alone, it can be difficult to differentiate small airway disease from small vessel disease. <coughs> because uh, both lead to decrease in the caliber of the vessel in the area of decreased attenuation. Other clues on CT uh, we will discuss later help to make the correct diagnosis. <coughs> Sorry, I have some pharyngitis. <coughs> So, no. or air trapping on the expiratory field. We said brown glass of passage is a common finding. Uh, there will be thickened uh, alveolar wall due to inflammation or fibrosis. There will be either uh, alveolar collapse or increased capillary blood volume or any condition that causes fluid cell or amorphous material partially filling the alveolar space or a combination of this. And by the way, ground glass opacity differentiated uh, from the consolidation by that. In ground glass opacity, there is partial filling of the of the alveoli. While in consolidation, there is complete filling. Differentiating the alveolar from interstitial uh, diseases as a cause of ground glass opacity is difficult, and the imaging op appearances may overlap. Pulmonary hemorrhage, for example, uh, initially involved air spaces. It appears as a sign of alveolar disease. But uh, with time, there will be signs of interstitial disease, example, septal thickening, because of the repair and clearance process. Similarly, many causes, including uh, other causes like infection, diffuse alveolar damage, and organizing pneumonia, they present both with interstitial and alveolar abnormality. So most cases of alveolar abnormality subsequently will develop signs of interstitial lung disease. I and mean, from ground glass opacity to interstitial lung disease finding like fibrosis. So how, how we can differentiate uh, between the causes of mosaic attenuation? Yes. Uh, first, assess the morphology of peripheral va pulmonary vasculature. This is one of the first steps in determining the cause of uh, mosaic attenuation and to determine which portion of the parenchyma is abnormal. First, to know which portion is abnormal. Site of the per peripheral pulmonary artery in the more loosened lung, we see. In the we have uh, an area of loosened lung. We observe the size of pulmonary artery. If there is vascular disease, they, are, they, they will be attenuated. Uh, so the cause is vascular, either pulmonary artery hypertension or chronic thromboembolic disease. In the case of chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension, they are usually segmental or subsegmental. Segmental or subsegmental. This is classical, although not limited to the uh, chronic thromboembolic disease, like in this case. This is a case. First, you see there is mosaic attenuation. This area of higher increased density, area of decreased density. In, the, in this area, we see that the size of the pulmonary, uh, the size of the vessels are increased. Isn't it, Dr. Ahmed? Or attenuated. Uh, sorry. We see this is the these small dots are visible. They are smaller than this. 
Another important uh, finding is that the larger arterioles, they are larger than the associated bronchi. This is the artery. This is the... Another uh, differentiating feature is the sinus of pulmonary arterial hypertension. This is the enlarged uh, main pulmonary tract. Also, it's a clue for diagnosing the pulmonary arterial hypertension. In the case of uh, small airway disease, let us go to this picture. Again, this is a case of small airway disease. Again, there is area of hypotenuation and hyperattenuation. Again, we see in the hypotenuated area, the size of the uh, vessels are smaller, we see. In this case, in this case, we cannot differentiate between the vascular cause and small airway disease. Well, in the case of uh, ground glass, uh, ground glass of Asti, as in this picture, we see mosaic attenuation. The ground glass of Asti region is abnormal. In the reverse to small airway disease and vascular disease, there is uh, no attenuation of the vascularity. Vascularity is uh, uniform throughout the lung. Uh, yes. There is fibrosis, set of thing, yes. It's a, a case of uh, uh, diffuse alveolar hemorrhage. Another important point to know the cause of the mosaic attenuation is to look at the large airways. Because sometimes small airway disease, uh, small airway disease we say it involve the small business below the resolution of CT. So, proximal abnormality of the bronchi can be a good indicator that the underlying mosaic attenuation is related to small airway disease. For example, if you see thickening of the bronchi due to inflammation, light and bronchitis, you at that time decide that, that the mosaic attenuation is associated with small vessel disease, associated with large vessel disease. Or if you see distortion, with large airway disease in association. Yes. Or when you, you, you don't know the cause of the small airway disease, is, uh, the cause of mosaic attenuation is either small airway disease or vascular, 
At that time, you can decide that this altitude is smaller or this. Or when there is distortion or dilatation of the bronchi, as in the case of bronchiectasis, yes. uh, there are studies that uh, encourage the, the observation of the large airway disease. And some study is regarded that they are even better than, than air trapping, when it depending on air trapping. So depending on the large uh, airway observation is very important. Uh, a large airway disease, inflammation will, look, will lead to increased wall thickening and mucus production uh, due to infection or uh, toxins. A chronic uh, large, uh, large airway disease is commonly seen in asthma, asthmatics, and smokers. So, lead to injury of large and small airway disease simultaneously. When there is bronchial wall thickening, uh, plus distortion of the airway and mucus pl plugging with mosaic attenuation. So think of downst downstream injury to the small airway. And it is a case of large airway disease uh, descended to include the small airways. But sometimes be aware not every bronchial wall thickening is due to large airway. In the case of uh, pulmonary edema, when there is flu when, uh, sorry, when there is fluid overload, there will be bronchial wall thickening due to bronchial wall edema or fluid within the surrounding connective tissue. In these cases, when there is edema, how you to differentiate from large airway disease? At that time, there is no mucus plug and uh, no airway distortion. <laughs> This case of uh, case of cystic fibrosis with bronchiectasis, you see bronchial wall thickening, mucus plugging, uh, extending to the more loosened area of the lung. And that uh, this is confirmed that the loosened small arteries within the loosened area yes. with the bronchi leading to the abnormal all of them indicating uh, airway disease. About this case, I don't know about this case. Uh, this is a case of uh, pulmonary edema. Yes, although the bronchial walls are uh, thickened, but they are uh, normal palina, no plugging, no irregularity. And uh, there are other signs of pulmonary edema, like septal uh, thickening. Yes, so this is uh, not large airway disease and pulmonary edema. Another, another cause that we said, bronchiectasis has many causes, either congenital or causes of constrictive bronchiolitis, toxic inhalation, or uh, implant organ transplantation. So the distribution of bronchiectasis helps to differentiate between small airway disease and parenchymal cause. When there is a small airway disease like constrictive bronchiolitis, an abnormal, if you see abnormal bronchi supply the hypoattenuated lung area, this is regarded as large airway disease, not parenchymal disease. While if the bronchi, normal bronchi located in areas of normal parenchymal attenuation, this is regarded as parenchymal disease. But do you have any note about this? Like this, like this picture. Like this picture.
like this one, but I mean, this is what it is. Okay. 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 This is the same, and this is a case, for example, in this case, we oh, see... It could be the same location, it's a normal work, I think, a normal yes. one, and that's normal work, and it's a normal area, yes. Normal area, yes. Uh, the parenchymal causes of uh, mosaic attenuation, like organizing uh, pneumonia, or organizing phase of diffuse alveolar damage and less space interstitial... <laughs> In these cases, uh, there will be increased parenchymal attenuation due to interstitial inflammation, interstitial fibrosis, or alveolar collapse. Uh, abnormal or dilated airway, there will be prominent in areas of increased attenuation, help in differentiation from small airway disease. Like, like in this case. of the mosaic attenuation is to look for the direct signs of small airway injury. Uh, although it is not possible in normal individual, but sometimes you see centrilobular or three in but nodules. Anytime centrilobular nodule or three in but with mosaic attenuation indicates small airway disease. And they are usually focal and due to inf infectious bronchiolitis. In hypersensitivity pneumonitis, inflammation of respiratory bronchioles mostly is due to inhalation of organic antigen. In the early stages of hypersensitivity pneumonitis, there will be alveolar disease and air, airway centered interstitial inflammation around the respiratory bronchiolitis due to centrilobular pneumonitis. The hyperattenuated area is abnormal, surrounded by normal hypoattenuated lung. Uh, sometimes it is uh, diffuse and can be difficult to localize uh, any normal lung attenuation, but hypersensitive neuronite is usually upper lobe dominant centrilobular nodule, ground glass opacity, and areas of hypotenuation. Anytime, these combinations should suggest a persistent okay. 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 So in this stage, it is an alveolar disease. Usually, usually hypersensitive pneumonitis is there will be continuous exposure and reaches the fibrotic stage.
as in this case, uh, this is a case of hypersensitivity pneumonitis. Patient has history, uh, has multiple parot as pitis, and exposure to parot, uh, diffuse any ground glass opacity, meet an upper zone predominant. Yeah. There is some normal uh, basal normal. Yeah. So hypersensitivity pneumonitis reached the fibrotic stage. So sinus of fibrosis, like like this reticulation. Also, there is centrolobular nodulus, and also associated with some nodulus of hypoattenuation due to air trapping. We say that sometimes associated with air trapping. Another entity is. Smoking related diseases like respiratory bronchitis, respiratory bronchitis, interstitial lung disease, and squamative interstitial pneumonia. Yeah. Respiratory bronchitis by itself is incidental. We can see respiratory bronchitis incidental, but uh, Associated with mild airway and interstitial inflammation with the centrilobular nodule and mild ground glass opacity. This can be seen normal. But if the patient becomes symptomatic with the, with the, with, there may be some error, with amno, a restricted pulmonary function test, at that time, the clinical diagnosis of respiratory bronchitis interstitial lung disease is mild. Yes. Uh, respiratory bronchitis and hypersensitivity pneumonitis, they are, the sinus are much close together and sometimes may be difficult to differentiate, uh, especially in the earlier stage, uh, because both the show upper lobe predominant, centrilobular nodule, and mosaic attenuation. How we can differentiate hypersensitive pneumonitis from respiratory bronchitis by two things. In the respiratory bronchitis, we see the emphysema, presence of emphysema, and history of smoking, because uh, smoking is protected against hypersensitive pneumonitis. Yes. Uh, this is the case of uh, respiratory bronchiolitis. We see any generalized ground glass opacity, mid and upper zone predominant, uh, some basal yani, preservation, same, yani, almost the same as, as this picture. Yani. Okay. And we see in the, in the case of uh, hypersensitivity pneumonitis, not hypersensitive pneumonitis. In the case of same acrylic. This is respiratory bronchitis before becoming interstitial lung disease association. Uh, and this quantity of interstitial pneumonitis tend to be mid and lower low periodontal. The reverse to and another important feature is cystic change. Cystic change, like in this picture. Same, brown glass opacity, centrilobular nodule, but uh, we have some cystic change, but they are not, re they are not related to honeycomb. This is this quantity of interstitial pneumonia. One of the important uh, things to note, uh, to know the cause of mosaic attenuation is to assess the pulmonary vasculature for their size and uh, morphology both central and peripheral pulmonary arteries to differentiate from small, artery, small airway disease. If pulmonary arteries are enlarged, so evaluate for the sinus of 
uh, pulmonary arterial hypertension as a cause of mosaic accumulation. Central pulmonary artery enlargement is not specific, just if you measure the size. So pulmonary artery to ascending aorta ratio is taken. Any time ratio more than one is abnormal and is more accurate. Another sign is increase in the, in the segmental artery to bronchus ratio. This is highly specific if include more three or more than uh, include three or more lobes. Normal pulmonary artery regarded as 29 million for and 27 million for is measured uh, transverse diameter. It's also mentioned that the segmental artery to bronchus ratio is highly specific, provided that three or more lobes are involved. Normal size of pulmonary artery is 29 mm, 29 mm and 27 for women. Measure transversely at the size at the level of main pulmonary artery on axial image. Uh, this is uh, not specific for pulmonary artery. Not every enlargement of pulmonary artery is pulmonary artery hypertension. There are other causes of enlargement of the main pulmonary artery, maybe due to body mass index, systemic hypertension, diabetes, age, and underlying cardiovascular disease. Ascending aorta is also measured at the same level for comparison. It's a case of uh, pulmonary arterial hypertension. We see uh, multiple areas of hyperattenuation around the pulmonary artery. Uh, there is uh, this expiratory film showing diffuse increase in the opacity. Right, it's not the spectrum, the yes. There is no air trapping. Just yes. Yes. I think the is much larger from the ascending aorta. If you look at the heart, you see the right ventricle. Why do you see a projecting away from the left right ventricle? Also, there is hypertrophy of the right ventricle wall. So, one of the important features is just noting to compare with the later images that pulmonary artery hypertension is multicentric, yes. not any segmental. Because we see later in the thromboembolic disease, they are segmental. This is diffuse. Uh, pulmonary artery not, as, not just assessed for their size. They are also assessed for their morphology. Because if there is abrupt tapering or so, or forex screw vessel, and dilated uh, bronchial or other systemic collateral is also associated with pulmonary arterial hypertension. While in the case of chronic thrombolic disease, there is, you may see thrombus, you may see abrupt occlusion, luminal irregularity, wolf thinning, or pubis or bandus. But how to differentiate between pulmonary arterial hypertension and chronic thrombolic uh, disease? Not always easy, but in general, thrombolic disease usually there is well demarcated. Well demarcated segmental or segmental distribution, and due to vascular distribution of the thrombi. While pulmonary arterial hypertension, there is focal perivascular hyperattenuated area. Yes. As in this case of chronic thrombolic disease, we see this segment hyperlucent, uh, hypolucent, and uh, this segment is uh, hyperlucent. This is the. This is.
Non è Two slides to the Nazan of the Ash is the smile of the Zulu. Two third row, you want third row. The lady to have a how what you had to get. Doctor Ahmed, I mean, simplified, but not much. 